Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Thank you so much for um, I Step 10. I, I, uh, I really got a lot out of that. Um, first of all, I want to say I am so happy and so grateful that um, this weekend has happened. I, um, I feel such a healing happen. I feel such a great connection. Um, it's just been a really great experience. Everybody here has got such great spirits and have such a huge heart filled with love. And it's really wonderful. I um, Before I came into the program, you know, my step is sought through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact with God as I understand Him. Praying only for the knowledge of His will for me and the power to carry that out. Um, before I came into um, Alcoholics Anonymous, as a kid, I was raised a certain way. I was raised Catholic, and I had a God that my mother had given me. And, you know, I believed this God was really out to kill me and hurt me because putting me with this very, very unsafe woman who was very abusive and not protective and not loving was overwhelming. And uh, I thought when I came into AA, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful I found the prime time you know, um, 12 and a half years ago, I, uh, I got sober when I was 21 years old. I got sober because my life wasn't working and I wasn't introduced to the principles of Alcoholics Anonymous. I was kind of brought into this dysfunctional family I called Alcoholics Anonymous and it was wonderful and it served a purpose at the time. And I, I did a lot of stuff on the outside because I really thought that it was about the alcohol and it was be, about giving it up and getting a life. And I really just thought there was two parallels. It was drink, don't drink, everything happily go after. And I never got what was going on. I would hear about people saying, I'm just going to give it to God. And I would think, what's wrong with me? I don't get what you're saying. I really don't get what you're saying. I don't know what you mean by give it to God. I don't even know who God is. But I would sit there and I would pray and I would do the obligatory prayers, throw my prayers up, lots of requests. You know, God, if you love me, you'll give me a great guy. God, if you love me, you'll make me lose 20 pounds. God, if you love me. And I would have my infinitum list, you know, and I would see all these people in AA getting these great jobs and these husbands and these money, property, and prestige, and all this stuff, and I thought if I pushed harder, and if I did harder, so I went back to high school, you know, I left school, set, and went to nine, seven high schools, and I went back to high school, and went back to college, and I did all this stuff on the outside, because Alcoholics Anonymous really helps us do our life, so we can enter back in the world and look like respectable citizens, and it really did work for me, it worked for a long time, until one day, I went to an Alcoholics Anonymous and talked about how I wanted to kill myself. And I got this, oh, thanks so much for sharing. What a great day. You know, and I said, screw this place. Because what I was going into AA is I was going here to get you guys to fix me. I was going here to get, 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 me, 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 me. And I had worked the steps and I had said, my sponsor would say, just say the first three steps. Okay. And I'd say, I'm, she'd say, now you're better. I go, okay. And I wrote an inventory. My inventory consisted of how horrible my life was and what happened to me and the stuff because I have a really great story. And I was so attached to it. I was married to it. I was in love with it. It kept me going. And then I did all that stuff and I made amends and I wanted to get the, you know, the pat on the back and continue to make amends. I got a high off saying, oh, I'm such an asshole because they'd go, oh, and I get my ego fed more and more. And then I would pray, and I would go to retreats, and I'd meditate for three and four hours at a time, you know, thinking about Hillary, three and four hours at a time. And uh, I ended up going out, and it was, thank you, God, for getting me to drop to my knees. And I came back in, and a guy said to me, who I'd known for 20 years, he said, Hillary was the first person in my life who told me the truth. And he said, Hillary, you are dying from the inside out, and it's really, really a tragedy. And it pierced me. And, you know, he had been sponsored by Bob, 
And he said, I've seen you for all these years. You keep getting it outside, but you're getting worse. You're getting less inside. And it really hurt. It, it touched me. And, you know, I took off nine months, and I read the book, and I did this stuff. And, you know, step 11 for me, and I think for everybody, is I cannot understand, I can't grasp this step until I have thoroughly looked at my first step and my second step and then surrendered to really feel my third step. Because for me, my first step, I am incredibly powerful. I am so powerful. I have a very loud energy. I know my power, but my misuse of power is my problem. You know, I, can, I am so unbelievably strong for destruction, for pain, for misery, for hurting you, for hurting myself, for causing lies and cheating. I'm really, really wonderful at that. And I built this character based on this. You know, I was raised in alcoholism. I have my pathology of, you know, where I come from. And I based this whole character in Hillary on it. And when you come in here and say, hey, just, you know, let go, let go. And I'm like, okay. I have no clue what you're talking about. I really don't. And I came in here clueless, and I stayed for nearly 25 years clueless until I really wanted to put a gun to my head. That is the solution to me. My dad did it. Why not me? Because that's where my brain goes, you know? So when it says, it says to me in the second step, I have to see how unmanageable my life is. In the second step, it says I have to come to believe in a power greater than myself, meaning I am a power. And so I have to see how my power works, and I have to go through all these steps because it keeps itching away and chopping away a little bit more at Hillary's self-ego alcoholism, Hillary's self-ego alcoholism, a little by little. So when I go to sought, sought doesn't mean I find God. And I thought everybody found God. I remember when I was 15 years, 14 years old, my neighbors used to be, my, they probably still are, but they're Christian, and they used to pray for me, and they'd say, we're going to save you, and I would think, please, somebody save me, somebody rescue me, and I really wanted to be rescued, and so when I go into, I, I thought that if I found God, my life would be okay, because I just, I'm lazy by nature, I don't want to do a thing. I don't want to self-reflect. I don't want anything because my ego and my character, my alcoholic character is so strong. And there are some people in this room who sees how this little, uh, the, the, the girl in the basement wants to come up. She is going to fight to the last end. I am a fighter. I have been, you know, I go to jail for it. That's the girl I am. As sweet as I look, I am a nightmare. Trust me. I don't even have to put, I don't even have to put alcohol in me. I am cunning and baffling, smart, mean, wicked. I am the biggest bitch because I am so in self. So when I have to be sought, sought means i got to keep looking for this. i got to keep hungry for this. And because I've gone through all the other steps, my appetite has grown a little bit more every day and more every day. You know, when it says, it says, um, through prayer, my prayers used to be, I used to give a list. Now my prayer is like, God, I don't know what you want me to do today, but I'm going to pray for love and compassion and your will. Your will. I never did that before because I didn't want to do God's will. That means I have to give up my power. And I can't go from 2 to, le to, to 11. i got to go through all these other steps to where I get hungry and I see how my power is really just cause so much pain and I get to feel it at the depths of my soul. You know? And when I came in the first time, I didn't, I wasn't blessed. Or I was blessed, but I didn't want to take the blessing of someone walking me through this path, you know, I had to hear it in my face. I had to be told, this is how my disease is acting in the day I'm in. I need to be told that because I, this brain, smart little cookie, will figure out, it's going to figure out a way not to get better. It's just, that's all it wants to do. And I can't go to me for that. So I have to, you know, I remember this one sponsor said to me, just meditate. And I go, what does that mean? I can't sit there and think, you know, how can I sit and not think? 
She said, sometimes all meditative is, is, is focusing on a construction, constructive thought. Maybe be joy. Maybe it be doing the dishes. I'm right here, right now. I'm putting my hand inside the glass. I'm wiping the glass. It's being constructive in my thought. And I'm an alcoholic. I'm not constructive in my thought. I'm destructive in my thought, you know. But I can't get there unless I go through all these other steps. I can't stress that enough. Because I, you know, I thought that all I had to do is say my prayers, sit for five minutes, and my life would be wonderful, you know. Um, some of the things I do today is, um, you know, I'm going to read some stuff just so it doesn't sound like it's coming from me. Um, I, you know, this last couple months, I listened to the website I go on the prime time is now, which is awesome. Anyway, I can pitch that one for days. Um, and I turn on Sermon on the Mount and I put it in my ears before I go to sleep at night because this brain needs rewiring, serious, serious, serious rewiring. And, um, you know, I can't go to my head to feel better. I've tried everything. I shop. I eat. I have sex. I don't have sex. I lie. I cheat. I get jobs. I make lots of money. I throw the money away. I, it doesn't matter. I've gone through everything. And that's how I used to seek joy. That's how I used to seek contentment. And, you know, I, I can't get there because it's, I just can't. It doesn't work that way, you know. I don't know. I'm so nervous just because I'm with my peers. Um, you know, there's this one, I love this one saying, which is like, my sponsor pointed this out. He says, God, there's so much I've done the one. Um, uh, it says, we can try to stop making unreasonable demands upon those we love. Oh, why did I pick this part? Hello. And we can show kindness where we had shown none. Courtesy, kindness, and justice, and love. Thy will be done, thy mind. I have, because I was so conditioned to have this Santa Claus God, okay, that all I had to do was say my prayers, and I have friends who have Santa Claus gods, and it works for them. But for me, it's the hardest thing for me to say is, I don't know. I don't know what's best for me. Because I know everything. You know, that's my disease of alcoholism. I know everything. I want everything right now. I want it in a hurry. I want you to do it my way. I'm a baby, and if I don't get my way, I'm going to have a tantrum. That's the way I operate. That really is the core of who I am. It's pathetic. But, you know, the thing is, is if I don't go to a power other than Hillary, and I don't find him, I just keep seeking for him. And, you know, I have to do things like, God, can you please be with me right now? Did you hear it? My mind just told me, just be with me, God. Please be with me. Help me feel love. I don't even, help me just feel love. And then all of a sudden I'm like, wow, when I run into people, I have the most magical life when I center myself in the morning. And you know that I used to, my parent, sponsor used to say to my old sponsor, used to say, pray in the morning and pray at night. That is not enough for me. That is just not enough for me. Because my brain is so quick, it's already focusing on something else. So I have to do it all day long. I get to do it all day long. God is awesome to me. I, I get filled up with, I love God. I used to say when I was younger, women like me, I'd go, oh, God, how disgusting, you know. They seem like, I am I am that woman. I'm the woman I've always hated to be. And it's a great, I'm like, wow, that's kind of funny, ironic, you know. The one I point at, I become, you know, in every avenue. Um, I love Bob's book. It's been just, I, I'm, I'm in such a, such a great place right now. I am. I, um, it says, in, it says in step 10, we grow spiritually. It says step 1 through 9 makes it possible for me to grow spiritually. And it says, I'm a character that is an open mind. My mind was never open. My mind was so closed. I always say that a mind is like this. If I have anything in my hand and I close my, my hand, there's no way anything can come in or go, so I can't give anything to anybody. I can't receive anything. And 
And when I ask God to give me an open mind, because I can't go to myself for this, because it's going to budge, it's going to say, no way, I'm on a mission to kill myself and everyone around me. So when I say, God, please open my, close, you know, I go, please open my mind so I can hear you, so I can feel you, so I can taste you, I can touch you. And it comes in so many different forms, you know. And when my mind is open, I can feel love. I can hear the message. I can hear when my friends say, it's your disease, Hillary. This is not the truth. And when I am so in self, I can't hear anything. You know, I can stay sober for a very long time, miserable. I am so used to being miserable. It's it's not comfortable, but it's familiar, you know. I'm in a place in my life where I will do anything for joy. And if it means going to school, if it means not working, I've changed my career. I trust God explicitly. I don't have a job this week. I don't care because God's my source. I don't have to figure out where I'm supposed to get the job. How am I going to get that I have rested that all aside. And when I sit, my I just really, it's, it's to a point where, you know, I just want to do what God wants me to do. And I never thought that way before I came in an Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm, I am a one bundle of fear, you know. I was, I was raised in a way that was, I had to figure it out. And when you come in here and you say, uh, you know, if I had to do step 11 when I first came in, because when I first came in, I thought, oh, yeah, I'm just going to pray, and I'm going to go from 1 to 12, and I'll pray occasionally in the morning. And I couldn't get the feeling. I couldn't get that, like, hmm. Um, I mean, it's a contrary action to me, too. Like this morning, I got up this morning, and, you know, the first thing I think about is, thank you, God, so much for my breath, and thank you for this weekend. Gratitude is not a normal thing for me, because I'm always making requests. And you can't, I can't be in gratitude if I'm always asking for something more. You know, when I'm, when I'm in my disease of alcoholism, when I'm in I, my ego myself, I'm never satisfied. I'm starving all the time. I'm so hungry for more and more and more. So regardless if I get the great job or the person or the place or the trip, it's never, ever enough. You know, and being still, there's, you know, that saying, be still and know that I'm God. If I just break that down, and it really is just be. And when I am just here in the moment right now, God comes into me and fills me up. And it seems like nothing really matters anymore. You know, it's not that I don't care about the job. It's not that I don't care about the bills. And it's not that I don't care about the people I love. It's just that in this moment right now, I don't have to take care of everything. And that's always been my biggest burden. I feel like I've got to do it. i got to do it. Because there was a time all growing up and, you know, and all in my drinking, I didn't know what was going to happen next because I was out of control. And I couldn't stop this. I really couldn't. And so when you come into Alcoholics Anonymous and, you know, the primetime message really gets me to right here, right now, that's all I have to worry about. And if I just focus on God be with me now, it seems like the floodgates of joy is just washed through me. And if that's the only thing I get out of life, it is above and beyond. You know, I, I've made a lot of interesting choices based on my disease of alcoholism. And I can go back and beat myself up. But the truth of the matter is, is everything that I have done and all the gifts that God has given me, I have so much to offer the world. And that wasn't what I thought about before I came to the program. I wanted to get you to get things get better. It's all about get, get, get. And, you know, I just want to do God's will. And it sounds so pansy-wansy, and the truth is, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I laugh, and I go to work. People are like, you're kind of you're kind of a crazy girl. And I'm like, I love it. I'm, you know, I love my job. I go to work, and I'm known to be the happy girl. People at work depend on me being happy. I can't go to self to be happy. I have to tap into my source, and I have to do that. I don't do it in the morning, and you know, just in the morning at night. I got to do it all day long. God, can you please be with me? Did you hear what my mind says? Me, it wants to kill me. Help me, help me. And then, how can I think about somebody else? How can I turn my my thought to another human being? How are you? And then, in that moment of time, there's like this magical thing. It's like you know. 
the sun is here, I told my friend this the other day, I said, the sun is here and the earth is here. If the sun, there's, there's something that happens, and we all know a little physics, is in between that there's this black hole. They can't really understand why it doesn't destroy this, the earth, that, that sun, that piercing, fierce, unbelievable light that gives us light and, and growth and, you know, keeps us warm and all that stuff. And somewhere in between the sun and the earth is this black hole. And that's like my God. And when this is Hillary, I am strong and I'm fierce, but I can burn and scorch everything in my world. And it's so symbolic for me, you know. And what I am, and when I say, God, please be with me right now, help me choose that right decision. How can I do this? It's not going to hurt another human being. How can I bring love to another human being? All of a sudden, in that black hole, something happens. And then those words just come, and that ease and comfort is just given to me. And that just that matter of a moment, a matter of a second. And when I came here and you said, just turn your will and your life over to God, I was like, okay, I'm here. And I'm going, how do I get from here to, like, you know, Mexico? And I thought, I'm never going to get there. Give up. Here's my disease of alcoholism. You know, I can only treat my disease in the second I'm in. The second. And when, like you said, when it comes up, I got, you know, I have a choice. That's my wonderful gift that God gave me, is choice. I can have that choice to either go to God or go to Hillary. I got a choice. I still have choices. It's not like, oh, I can't drink, I can't do this anymore, I can't have a, no, I have a choice. So, um, anyhow, I, I, I'm like lost for worse here. I'm just like in this little la-la, you know, I'm grateful that, um, I'm just grateful I'm alive. I'm grateful I'm at peace. I'm grateful I like everything about my life. I haven't found anything wrong today because I went to God. You know, I only have problems when I think about myself too much. And usually that's just a couple of seconds, and that's it. I'll go down. You know, I, uh, I don't know. I don't have anything else. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm kind of, uh, done. Yeah. 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 When faced with a decision, how does God's will reveal itself to you? You know, it says, it talks about it in the 12 and 12. It gives us specifically how to deal with when faced with a decision. Um, when you're, if you're anything like me and you like to be in control and you like to manage and direct everything in your life, because I have a little bit of that issue, you know, if you want to do that, then your ch- chances are what you're going to get is exactly what you get, you know. But it says, it says we stop, it says when we're, we come to that place, in all these situations, we need self-restraint, honest analysis, and what is willing. A willingness to admit, um, hold on, oh, spot. There is nothing in that, the, oh, not that part, oh, <laughs> such a mess, it's awesome. <laughs> to improve our conscious contact with God, we be, it says knowledge for his will and the power to carry us out. One of the things I do is when I have a decision I have to be made, I had something happen the other day. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. I got an email from a contractor. I'm building a house. I've never done this before. I have not a clue what I'm doing. All I know is I'm moving forward, and I'm in fear constantly. I have land up there. It's paid for, but I'm in fear constantly because I've never done this. So instead of what I used to do is I used to ask a million people their opinions because I all want, because there's a side of me, I really want you guys to take care of me. I really don't want to take responsibility. I love being a victim. It works. It's work. It feels good. It may be a ratty, sleazy pair of, you know, a jacket, but it's mine. So I like going to the rest of the world to fix me. And so what I've done since I've been, you know, in the last seven months, I've been really focusing on keeping my mouth shut with God's help. When I want to open my mouth and talk to the world, I say, God, can you please be with me now? Please help me make this decision. Enlighten me. Reveal yourself to me. 
And so what ended up happening is this woman sends me this letter. She says, if you don't have $43,000 by tomorrow morning, I'm keeping your $25,000 deposit. The first thing I thought is, oh, my God. My first thought was, what can I sell? And what's happened is, since I've been doing the primetime message so intensely, the second thought was, I need to golden key this. And so I sat for a moment, and I imagined taking this problem and handing it over to God and saying, God, could you please be with me now? I'm so scared that I'm going to lose the little that I have. You know, and I am afraid that I'm going to have to let go. And so I ended up making it, I, I told one person, because remember I'm a talker, and I, I told one person, and every time it cropped up, I said, I'm giving this to you, God, please help me with this decision, I'm turning it over to you. And I let it sit for 24 hours. It talks about that in the big book. It says one in fear or angry, pause when agitated and ask God to what, direct you to what he would like you to do. And I actually did that. And so what ended up happening is the next morning, I said a prayer and I said, God, can you please be with me now? Can you please put the words in my mouth because I'm really afraid? Can you please remove my fear? And it went away like that. And I got on the phone and I said, God, can you please remove my emotions? Because it says in 52 that we are, we are, you know, emotional prey. I'm a prey of my emotion. It just eats me up. It wants to attack and kill me. And I called this woman and I said, I understand where you're coming from. And I bet I know you want your money and I, my loan has not come through. So I don't know what to do. Can you help me with it? What do you think I should do? And this woman's whole energy shifted. She said, I'll figure it out. I'll put the money down for you. And I was like, you know what? God is awesome. See, when I, when I surrender to the point, surrendering for me doesn't mean, you know, I love it in the, in the TiVo paper, it talks about compliance and it talks about surrender. For me, compliance is, yeah, I'm going to do it this one time, but I, you know, I'm going to figure it out next time because it worked 12 times ago. And surrender means, you know what? Here is my hand. I open it. You take it. Whatever you want, I give it to you. Just, you know, and there's a sense of like relief. There's a sense of calmness that comes over you, you know? God, I can't see. I have lived on my senses my whole life, life, seeing, tasting, touching, feeling, hearing. I've lived on these five senses to feel God. That is not where God lives. That's an attitude. It's like pepper on top of my meal. God is a feeling that is just deep inside of me, that feeling of going, it's okay, Hillary, I've got your back. I've never had anybody go back. I didn't have parents that supported me and loved me. So I depended on self, this ill self. So when I have these stuff come up, I, the first thing I do is, God, please be with me now. Can you meet, quiet my mind and open my heart to what message you want me to hear? Quiet my mind, open my mouth. If I have to mantra that a thousand times, all of a sudden I'm driving down the road and I go, wow, look at that pretty tree. All of a sudden it's like... It's happened. I don't even know it occurs. That's the magic of God. So, okay. How do you remember to remember to ask for higher powers uh, guidance always throughout the day? Well, I don't go to me to remember because that's where my problem is. So I just do it. You know, I've gotten into a habit. I'm undisciplined by nature. I'm an alcoholic. I'm lazy. I don't want anything. I want it all handed to me. I want to be rescued. So why would I want to do anything? So my thing is, is for me, I try to say, God, be with me now. God, be with me now. God, be with me now. Is there something in that entering into the fourth dimension, which you don't even know? It's like, it's like the roof, the sky is your roof. I mean, it's like it goes forever and ever. When I'm in third dimension, meaning when I'm in Hillary, self, ego, and alcoholism, third dimension, and everything else is a mere reflection of what I cause inside. So if my life is shitty, it's because I'm pretty shitty inside. And if my things are falling apart, it's because I'm falling apart inside. So when I go to the fourth dimension, which is God, please be with me now. You are infinite love and wisdom, and you are, you know, you there is no boundaries. And when I go to that spot and I just say, God, be with me now, it's a practice. 
It's a practice. That's why there's ten other steps before you, because it's a breaking down the ego, the self, and the alcoholism, and all those ten steps, little by little by little, so you can get to it where it's an everyday thing, where if you don't pray, you're so uncomfortable. You're so sick to your stomach, and you, you know why you don't feel good. When I'm in step three, I don't know why I don't feel good, because I haven't, I haven't examined and looked at how self has created this whole life. I have to go, wow, I am, I can't go to me. I can't go to me. Because all this truth has been revealed. So, anyhow, I hope that answers the question. Still the alcoholic? Yeah. Um, I went over this, uh, step 12, but there's so much information in there, it all kind of fell out the other ear, like... Because it, you know, you're covering just about everything. Um, <clears throat> but I was thinking when I was sitting over there that what a cool group we have here, and how this wouldn't even happen. And if you all weren't here, and what a kind of eclectic motley crew we have here, but we're all united for the same thing, you know? And there's no hard, fast rules. I don't think there was anybody hiding out in their room this time, suffering. You know, I think we were all kind of ourselves, and we had a good time. And even though I wasn't here for a lot of the meetings, just being around everybody and feeling the love, it's great. And that's a blessing to be able to see that, because in the past, it, you know, in my mind, it would have had to be a hand-picked group of people with certain qualities to make me look better or something. But now... You know, I guess uh, having had a spiritual awakening, I can see people as beautiful for the way they are. Um, and that, that was never the way it was, you know. And, um, wow, step 12, okay. <laughs> I guess, you know, my outward life is really a manifestation of my inner life. And when I came here, I was uh, really suffering, physically and emotionally. I've been in prime time, I don't know, maybe five years, a little less. And I was really at my bottom. And, and you hear suicide a lot. I guess a lot of us had to get to that point, And that's where I had to get in sobriety with 12 years of sobriety. And I was um, introduced to Prime Time, and I came, and it resonated big time, so much so that I would squirm in my seat, and it took everything I could just to sit in the seat and not leave the meeting. Even though I heard, you know, what I needed to hear, or it resonated, and I heard the truth, you know, are, are we recorded this time? Is Okay. Well, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking this to all of you, even though it's the truth. That's how defiant. Like, I want to get better, but no, I don't want to get better, and I want to suffer and die miserable. I don't know. It's weird. And finally, I, I guess the surrender came. Astrid gets mentioned, gets mentioned a lot, but she really took me under her wing, and um, we talked a lot, and she's the one who said, you're speaking. You know, because I was such a shy person. I would never speak. I don't like getting up here. I don't like doing this. I don't even like going to retreats, honestly, in the past. I never did, you know. And if I did, I was the guy hiding in the room suffering. Um, and it's just not my life anymore. And, and I know it's not the outward things, but, you know, I, I was 40 years old or something when I came into prime time. I had 12 years of sobriety, and it didn't work. I was convinced it didn't work. And though I wasn't using drugs and alcohol, I was using other things, and I really took them as far as I can, I think. And um, I had a physical illness. I mean, I was dying, and I thought my life was over, and now my outward manifestation is I have a family. I couldn't even keep a relationship for more than a couple months in the past ever. A, a baby? I'm still, it's like I'm really beside myself. And we've even got a little business started that's starting to pick up. And that's an outward manifestation of in here. Because what first happened is I, 
I want to get to the 12 step, but I gave up. I just gave up. I surrendered and I started living these principles and practicing these principles broken down in prime time in a way that I could really hear and use it in my day. Like right now. Oh, it's right now I got to do this. And it's not some intellectual exercise. It's an experience right now. Okay, let's take some, any principle out of the 12 steps and let's use it right now in my life. And, and I began practicing that as much as I could remember to do that. And it's just in, a, I don't know, three years, I am a completely different spiritual awakening. I'm a different person. I am not the same person that came here. Um, and you know, the, the theme of step 12 is the joy of living. It says right there in the first paragraph. That, that's what it's about. And I know when I was new, I could not relate to step 12 at all. Like joy of living, spiritual awakening, that all sounded... Not even desirable, really. I just wanted to be clean and feel okay. And it still seems a little remote, but it, it happens in a, such a way that it's like my idea of what things are in the reality, and it talks about that instead of 12. Finding out what's wrong with us and finding the reality and the truth of our lives for each individual because we're all different, you know? And we can't get better until we know what's wrong with us, like character defects and such. And we all have a different story and different backgrounds. We, we need to get to know ourselves before we can get better. It also talks about understanding God, and which was a little conflicted for me because it's understood to me that God works, but I don't know that I understand God. And so, you, you know, I don't... But I do in a way, because going to God and understanding that he works in my life, I come to understand, I guess, God as the source of my life, this new life. You know, I came at a dying man who was going to hang himself, and now I'm, I'm actually enjoying life for the first time. Um, you know, at, at 40 something years old, I'm surprised I made it, and I'm grateful. Um, <clears throat> and you know, I don't want to get emotional, but it, it means so much to me because this is my life, and my life was over. Like, to me, suicide is real, and life I'm living today is real. And you know, these uh, these guys, I only hear about them. You know, I never met Bob Anderson or Ted Gratter. Uh, um, but they've set the groundwork for, for something that has, in my life, made all the difference. And it's AA, you know, it's this AA I've been coming to for 25 some years. You know, I was institu I grew up institutional as I was introduced to the program at like 13 years old. And um, it's just it's just so weird and bizarre because the way my mind works and alcoholism works is I think everything is... I have a fantasy life, sort of, and that is reality because the authority for my life is self, so I mean, you know, I thought this, this is true, this is how it's supposed to be, but nothing is the way it's supposed. To, I thought it was supposed to be. And, and... It works, it really does. That's like my favorite thing out of literature. It works, it really does. It really works. And if I can be here with my past, you know, and I'm sure it's not the worst, I think anybody can have a good life. And I'm talking with illnesses, physical, I'm talking money, no money, and it talks about that in here too. It, what it really gets down to is... Uh, Kind of the same stuff because it's all 12 steps. 
is God dependence. And when you're dependent upon this higher power, you can't play God yourself. So you're open to the source. And there's so many false dependencies of people, money, places, things. And they get in my way all the time. And then I go to God all the time. You know, it's a constant thing. And um, I'm just going to read the first paragraph here. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, I tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all my affairs. And it's kind of nice how the literature is so absolute. It doesn't say like 80% of my affairs or the affairs of my choosing. It says all of them. And the ones that I really don't want to practice them in are the are included in all of them, you know? <laughs> um, the joy of living is the theme of AA's 12th step, and the action, and action is the key word. Here, I turn outward toward my fellow alcoholics who are still in distress. Here, I experience the kind of giving that asks no rewards. Here, I begin to practice all 12 steps of the program in my daily life so that I and those about me may find emotional sobriety when the 12th step is seen in its full implication it is really talking about the kind of love that has no price tag on it and you know it talks about service too and for, for many 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 years up till recently, I didn't really have any sponsors, and when I did get one, I really didn't know what to do. You know, I tried to do what I saw other people do. And now I do have a couple of sponsors, and I can't say that I'm the best because I'm short of time, you know, I've got a baby now too and stuff, but I do have experience, especially in, well, the whole trip, the whole trip from, you know, sobriety day one till now, and especially the last couple of years, I feel like I really have no but nuts and bolts to give to somebody that they can use. And they're still coming back to me, so that's good. And um, <laughs> But you know, you know what was really important to me at, at first and before prime time or anything is I went in and out for so many years. I could not stay sober. I'm one of those guys, you know. And I didn't think I ever would. But when I would come back to the same meetings, I would see the same guys and girls sitting in the same seats. And I never spoke to a lot, most of them. I was really quiet. But it just was some kind of stability and comfort to see those same people. You know, it was like the only stability I really had. You know, the last house on the block with the same people. And it meant so much to me. And that's 12-step that's work there. You know, and it talks about people who make the meetings happen. You know, the coffee, the chairs, all the service work, the cleanup. That's all 12 step work. You guys being here. Without you, there is no, there is no retreat. And it's just such a beautiful thing now, too, because alcoholics are so isolated and so lonely, even in AA meetings. And I found. I would call this another spiritual awakening. I found that the wall is not there, you know? Like, I can just be myself and I can feel other people. And it's not like a word thing. It's like some kind of exchange of energy. And it just feels so good. Because I never had that. I was always alone. You know, they call the ego the isolator. And I guess my ego was so strong that I just... Even though people liked me and cared about me, I couldn't feel it. You know, it's just dead. So I would say that's a tenet of spiritual awakening. I feel like there's not one big spiritual awakening. I feel like they're happening all the time. Astrid talks about the aha moments. I feel like every aha moment, like, whoa, I've been reading this for 10 years, and now it really makes sense. But it's not here, it's here. It's like, whoa, like some opens, and you can see it for your life. You know, and the reason I put this in the first person is because when it says we alcoholics, blah, 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 I'm like, yeah, those alcoholics, they could really use this. And I see that in those people, but I, that's why I say I, because 
I, everything they're talking about is in here, I have. So it's easier for me to see it if I say I. Um, and the spiritual awakening is the joy of living. You know, and one of the people I, I watch a lot, and I, you know, I don't really like calling out people, but I watch Tony Z a lot because he seems. I mean, I can tell he was a little irritated with me last night, but because uh, he told me to do something, and I clearly just spaced it out. Like I'm like, oh yeah, you did tell me to do some things, huh? And but even then, is gracious, and he usually always is calm and has a smile and is loving. And he's one of the people that probably doesn't know it, but I watch him and I see that. And putting all these principles in my life, in the moment that I'm in, as much as possible, produce spiritual awakening, sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly. But if you keep going for it, I keep going for it, it really does work. And I'm here to tell you it really does work. It took 17 years. Uh, most of those pretty miserable. I'm, that's, I don't, that's my truth. You know, some people come in here and they seem to get it right away. God bless them, you know. That's, that's amazing. And, you know, and Max, he's a young man, and he's come into prime time with a year, and, and he's getting exposed to this right away. I, that's wonderful. I hope it sticks. Because my experience is anything from self, anytime I try to figure it out, analyze it, it just does not work. You know, alcohol, alcoholism, ego, and self are what are in my mind. I need to be free of that. And... I guess what one of the, here's, I'm just going to say this, this is the most important thing to me now and is the most difficult thing is God dependence. Like it sounds weak, it sounds irrational, it sounds like a crutch almost, to me anyway. Maybe you guys are good with it. To me it sounds like, what? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? But it turns out there are so many other dependencies out there, like money, women, family, and it's all maybe good intentions. You know, like I want to do this for a good reason, but it clearly doesn't work. God dependence is a source of strength. And when I go to the power, I've had so much experience now going to it. First it was weak and short, now it's strong and sometimes lasts a long time. And I had to build that. You know, I get like seconds. I would get seconds. Now I feel like this actual physical pillar of strength inside me when I go to the power because of all the experience. And I trust that over everything because I have years now of things working out. Not when I try to do what I say, but like the last speaker just said it. You know, when you have a decision to make, you pause. You ask for serenity if you don't have it. Or I do. I go straight to prayer. I rightly relate myself to the power. I'm not God some set prayer, but I rightly relate myself like, God, I'm really pissed off, man. I want to suck this guy in the jaw. That's the truth, right? Like I'm feeling my fists clench right now, God. Help. Or can you show me a better way? Can you give me a different experience? <coughs> And I get it. I get it. And if I don't get it, then I just keep doing it. And I get it, and I get it, and I get it, and I get it. And my whole life changes that way. It's, it's piecemeal and little little bits. And, and for me, it's just like, um, it's hard to put into words, but I have an entirely different life, and I'm just going to shut up now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can you talk?
talk about what emotional security and how you stay in this. Is that Okay. What emotional security is and how you stay in it. Okay, well, first of all, I, 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 it's like the steps. Complete defeat. i got to recognize that I'm run by fears and delusional thinking. I'm a complete defeat. I go to my relationship in step two with this power that I have a lot of experience in now. And it really always kind of boils down to this. You know, in this moment, I'm a complete defeat. And I don't even have to ask God. I just... I can almost just have the experience now because I practice at it. But I go to the power and I, I, I say, show me the truth. And then you know what the truth is? All this stuff is petty. Everything I'm thinking is so petty. Cars, money, houses. He's a jerk. She's a bitch. Whatever. I, I got all, so many years on this planet and I've been run by petty bullshit the whole time. The truth is... I can experience love. I have eyes to see this amazing garden planet in a whole universe of desolate nothing. I'm having an experience of light. What a gift. Like, I'm having relationships. Those are the true gifts. Um, and so I get a better perspective when I go to the power. That's all. I get more of a reality. Like, I'm not drowning in a sea of petty bullshit. And I'm, I'm not calling everyone's stuff petty bullshit. For me, it's petty bullshit because there is no joy in it. And I, I'm coming to believe that, well, joy is the theme of living. That's the first paragraph in step 12. You know, I'm coming to realize that that's what I'm here for, to enjoy my life. And the seemingly bad experiences are also experiences. I just label them bad. That's a tough one, though, because I have physical illnesses and things. But I'm more and more that I go for this, and the stronger my spiritual connection gets, I can even see those as experiences and um, gratitude. Because I have life, and life is a gift. You know? Oh. Must a person sponsor another person in order to fully experience this program? I don't think so. It says here in so 12, I, I, everyone should read it in 12 and 12, because there's so many other ways to be of service, and some people aren't in a position to do that, and it's not necessary. Why is carrying the message to another alcoholic important to your own recovery? That's important because, like I said, my life is important to me. I've actually been given a lot. And, and we hear it so much in AA, we hear so much suffering, but it's not real to you until it's your suffering. And I've been relieved. And if I can give that to somebody, I don't. There is nothing more important in life, I don't think. All right, I'm done. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.